Welcome to the Command Center Podcast. I'm Logan Paulson here with Fred Smoot and Santana Moss. Yep, yep. Guys, so fun to be here with you today. We have our live show coming up June 14th, Franklin Hall, D.C., 7 p.m. We will be giving out these shirts. Yes. Right? Free yes. merch. Yes. So please come by. We will also be giving out the Sign. five yep. signed jerseys, I yeah. believe, right? Is yeah, that right? Signed shirts, these. Yeah. Santana Mall, jersey. Logan jerseys, Paulson, sorry. And you can draw a mustache on his face <laughs> if you want. Yeah, and I'll sign my big forehead right here. Just yeah. sign that right on there. So Intern Carolina has selected our five winners that sent in to that hawkoutside at gmail.com. Thank you. You guys signed it. They'll mm-hmm. be coming out in the mail soon. But if you come out to the live show, I'm sure you guys wouldn't mind signing the Hey, first of all, no, I've been to Franklin about. Hall. Y'all going to love Franklin Hall. Last it's time you were at Franklin huge. Hall, it, the fire alarm went off. That was the draft. The, the, fire, draft. the fire alarm went off. Yeah, the, the fire alarm <laughs> went off. The roof was on fire. Nobody left. <laughs> uh, it was crunk out there. It's a huge place. The food was great. <clears throat> Is it like a bar? It's a bar. No, it's it's, it's more than a bar. I, I'm it's telling more you. More than a bar. <laughs> it, it's a bar that Ben Franklin himself <laughs> probably parted it in the 1700s. <laughs> all I'm telling you, it's worth it. The visit, my friend. <laughs> oh, my gosh. In addition to the live event, we also have a really cool new podcast coming out called Hail Tales. Yes. Right? And it is a kind of recap of the Super Bowl season. That team, Jason, just the guy Jason, Jack. produced it. I got to listen to it early. Very good, Jason. Nice done. Yeah, well, I produced and edited, but Hannah Lichtenstein did most she, of the yeah, work she here. Did like she did like the research. She interviewed. Um, yeah, the first episode is all about the lead up to Super Bowl Twenty Two with Doug Williams in mm. 1987. And uh, man, Hannah put in some work. She got interviews with Joe Gibbs. She yes. got Doug. She got Doug's brother, Ricky. Yep. Yes. She got Charles Mann, Dexter Manley. <laughs> Dexter like, Manley was funny. <laughs> and, <laughs> Dexter's always funny. And Doug had a emergency dental operation. She got the dentist. The day before wow. the yeah. Super Bowl. Yeah, yes. the day before. She got the dentist to that talk about it. special. Yeah, man. found the found all these yeah. people. They all agreed to do it. So think of like a documentary, but podcast try, form. It, that's it's kind of it's like, a, like a football life-ish, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, about that, like that specific And time. this is just the first episode. Yeah. We got six of them yeah. oh, really? come out this yeah. summer. So Yeah, yeah if you're a Commanders fan, again, I got to get a sneak peek of it. It's it's good stuff. And it you know gives a lot of context for the organization that year specifically and uh, – Shows how special some of those people on that team were. And that message was brought to you by just a guy, you know? Just a guy, Jason. <laughs> yes. Just, who You guys will get to see at the live event. You'll see him in person. Just a guy. Remember. He looks like just a guy. Like, <laughs> like we, He looks how you, you think so, he looks. You told him he looked like he Thor. He told me like Thor. Now yeah. he's saying he's just a jag. No, his hair. Looks like Thor. Hair. All right, yeah. let's let's get that correct. He got enviable hair for sure. But he yeah. does like Thor after he failed to stop Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> My guy, you can't be saying that about him. <laughs> Representation matters, <laughs> and I I felt seen. In memory, right? like, <laughs> oh my gosh so we got a kind of a cool show today yeah That's something i'm excited to see your guys perspective because i'm a young fella I'm way younger than you guys even yeah. though i look older than way both to rub of you. you in. yeah but um we're going to talk washington quarterbacks we're going to kind of tear this out into three sections we're going to start with who is the best quarterback in washington football history and i'm really curious to see who you guys are going to say for this Listen. You want to say what? Start. Who wants to start? All right, now, let's of start here. Let's start. start here. Yeah, you can say who the best, but every generation is going to have their mm-hmm. own favorites and they and the people they say the best. Yeah. But I mean, well, I, I look at this list. We got a list of guys. We got Sammy Baugh, Sonny Jurgensen, Joe Theismann, Doug Williams, Mark Rippon, Billy Kilmer, Kirk Cousins, and Robert Griffin the Thirds on here. We got also we got Jason Campbell and Mark Brunel. Yeah. yeah. I look at this list, and one name stands out above all the other names. And maybe it's because like I'm a history person, but Sammy Ball was Mr. Yeah. Football. Yeah, he rushed. He yeah. played defense. He, he played back in the he day. He had more again. interceptions than me. That's yeah. what 30, you really want. Thirty-one <laughs> interceptions. Yeah, I really wanted to get there. Thank you for that. Excellent. Leader. Rub it in. <laughs> he played quarterback and had more interceptions than Fred. So like, what kind of football but player? But guess what? He had more interceptions than this guy had receptions <laughs> in a season. That's all I'm saying. Is that true? No, I have mercy. Yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I think I had 37 one year, uh, but it's close. It's close. By six. it's close. I don't know. Yeah, fact check me, please, because I don't. I don't keep track of my Boy, stats you that is way. A fool. <laughs> I don't keep track of that like that. Oh, but yeah, so to me, I look at Sammy Ball and I'm like, it's got to be him. It's yeah. hard. You know what? I say that. Like, if you talk to the the, the brain trust of the Washington D, the DMV, yeah. 
a lot of people forget about Sammy Bar mm, yeah. because we're talking about not even flow model TVs. We're talking about a time of black and white TV. Is it 27, Jason? 37. Yeah, in 2013, hell of a year for you. 28 receptions. 28. Career not, high. Not, not 37, but yeah, yeah, it's good though. Good so, year. Not your career high in, yard, in yards though. Three yeah. touchdowns. He had, he had I, I 27 played. more catches than a dead. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. You can say that about anybody. Yeah. Though. <laughs> if you had 21 more interceptions than a dead, man. Yeah. Like, come on. <laughs> nah, to um to uh, to uh, Fred's point though, uh, getting back to the you know to the quarterbacks who who we think that's the best. Yeah. I, I think when you look at numbers, it jumps out to you that you say, okay, you can say these three names. Uh, Sonny, Theismann, and Doug. People look at, not not even numbers, but when you hear the stories about right. the quarterbacks here. Because they were like, kind of like the golden yeah. era. Yeah. It was Sonny that they talk about. It's Theismann that you hear always, Doug. Doug you yeah. know what I mean? But when, then when you look at the numbers, then you say, well, Damn. Why they don't talk more about Sammy Bob? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because he played I'm, too early. His numbers, and then we just wasn't thinking about that kind of football back yeah. then. And that, yeah. They played without Leather probably. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, dude, he, 187 touchdowns, like thrown, rush for. Like he played defense, he played offense, he punted, he returned. Like he was just like a guy, yeah. like like yeah. the dude. He was he was the I guess the, the epitome of what they did back in those yeah. days yeah. Uh, playing Before football. Before his time, he, yeah, he, they his, yeah. they smoked squares at halftime. Yeah, yeah. they they went out of there and they played. Joe Coos. They played. Kick, they ran kicks back yeah. as a quarterback. They played DB as a and quarterback. And they had a real job. And then had a job. Worked, yeah, they worked at a factory. Right? They so, left there. So he was. <laughs> that was the Iron Man type of type of football yeah. player back yeah. in those days. And also, you have know? you seen him give an interview? By the way, like like some of the old interviews on file. Have you heard? No, he's 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 wild. Yeah, he is wild. He's, he's an idiot. Like, yeah. He's like he's giving an interview for NFL Network a couple years ago. He's got a big old dip in. Yeah, spitting. He's on his front porch. The dog starts barking. He just smacks the hell out of the dog. Like he was a different kind of dude. No, man. no, he was the dude. But I have to say this because watching from the south and understanding that the, the Cowboys and the Washington team, mm. the rivalry, I thought you couldn't play for this team unless your name was Joe. Mm. Like everybody that was named Joe that had something to do with it, yeah. and you know Joe Theismann has one of those names, yeah. one of those football names. Yeah. Joe Theismann, like I'm and, sorry, and football face too. Yeah, and it just sticks. Like yeah. so, when I think of quarterback, to me personally, now I know everybody. Like I say, everybody yeah. got their guy. Yeah, my guy is Joe Theismann. Yeah, my guy is Joe Theismann. Not only because he was a great quarterback. He also ran back punts, and it's that big what if stigma. Yeah. Yeah. What if he doesn't get hit by Lawrence Taylor yeah. at that yard line and get he breaks all of these records? All look his, at his numbers. Also, yeah, just uh, just the guy. Can you look up? He had a couple years where he was just like the dude in the NFL. No, yeah. the he dude, had like, dude. Yeah. like thirty touchdowns. He's no. like thirty five hundred yards passing. Like yeah. he was crushing it. And again, I think also go ahead. Uh, no, because I, I want he's 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 doing his research thing. Look up his real pronunciation of his last name. He shared that with us. His last name isn't pronounced. It's Theismann. Theismann. It was, it was Theismann. Theismann. Yeah. And and he said they gave him. They, they gave because him of the Heisman. And, no. and he just ran with because it. Because like, it looks like, like the Heisman. word Heisman. Yeah. That's how it came. Like they want to change my name to Smut. If it was gonna get me five more millions. <laughs> but I think that's a good. That's, 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 a, that's a good point though, because like <laughs> when I growing up and I you know Joe Theismann, I was like man. No, yeah, he must have been a baller because no, it's yeah. the Heisman. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's mm -hmm. like the. But again, like he was excellent. I think the reason people knock him, and you, I don't want to speak on this because I don't know that much yeah. about it, but yeah. that he was kind of on a, he was a passenger, so to speak. Those teams were running the football a lot, played good defense. You, you don't have these numbers being right. yeah. passengers. This, yeah. These numbers are be, beyond game manager. But you got to think too, he was a different type of quarterback. He was like the the uh, Steve Young. Yeah, because like, he's short. Theismann basically ran, he can run with the ball. Yeah. He can, he, of course he can run the ball. He ran back but kicks. Yeah, yeah. So, so, you know that's, what I mean? He I still a, have a hard time believing that that's true. Yeah, he's a power turner. Why? Because you, he, what, he caught it's just like It's just like you, in, because he ain't Tim Dwight. You, that's no, what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's exactly what I'm saying. He's not Tim Dwight. Like, it's just like the idea that you couldn't, that your quarterback, your starting quarterback was your best returner. Yeah. Is like I can't wrap my head around it. Well, really. Lamar Jackson could be the best punt <laughs> yeah, returner for, for the Ravens that's right a good now. Point. All right, so all I'm saying is, Theismann had those years where one, it was a lot of success around the team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two, he felt, looked, seemed like a franchise quarterback. Yeah. Three, like I say, it's some about a quarterback with that Joe Montana, mm -hmm. uh, that like that name Joe. that just 
it, it echoes. Joe. It, it just worked. Then it was like Joe working with Joe. Joe mm -hmm. Gibbs working with Joe Thigh. It was just mm -hmm. yeah. like it was Joe Jacoby. It was like nine Joes on the team yeah. at the time. Like it was the thing to and I just like it it, it fits. Yeah. It works. Yeah. Yeah, and the other thing about him, I think, is like he's he's such like a pillar of the like he comes around yeah. the building and it's like oh Joe Thigh like uh, man you know he I mean? always just come but he's been doing that forever hey, we we used to be coming off the field and I I go to be I'm I'm sure I'm beating everybody in the showers and Thigh been be in the shower yeah hey, tell yeah he yeah. 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 hell you doing here like, <laughs> Joe Thigh been popping up in the shower <laughs> every Thursday Joe Thigh been one of those guys that he, he had a, that green light the, you know what I yeah. mean yeah. like the, it don't matter what he need to use he was gonna come in here he gonna eat with you he gonna he work out here he did he did what he wanted. Yeah. And also a great guy. Yeah, great, guy. Oh, great, dude. great dude. So no, great guy. Yeah, I think there's an interesting argument. And the other one that I think is really interesting is Sonny. Because like when you look at when Sonny played, mm -hmm. he was like the first like Thrower. real air raid guy. Yeah. yeah. And his numbers I remember looking up his stats last year. He had a year where he had I think it was thirty six hundred yards passing, thirty seven touchdowns, something like that. And it was better than I think it was three fourths of the league. He he would have been the fifth quarterback in passing now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, and, I, and he had a seventy percent complete. Like his the numbers were very modern in terms of how yeah. they looked. Yeah. yeah, and I think like for a guy that like you know we talk about Sammy Ball like all he did as a football player right. Mm -hmm. Talk about Joe Theismann, the Super Bowls, the leadership, the the playmaking ability, kind of the, the role he fit. But then when I look at Sonny, I'm like he was an innovator from a pass game standpoint. Yeah. And that's not all him. That's yeah. you know like. But you can't say Sonny without saying Billy Kilmer. Yeah. Why? It, it, Talk to me about it. I, it's this thing with those two. Yeah. Where the fan base had to choose. Mm -hmm. oh. Like, it, it, it kind of separated. Can you, can, do you know the history of it? Can you walk me through a little bit? Because I'm not familiar well, with it. Wasn't Kilmer the starring quarterback first? I believe, oh, is that true? Yeah, yeah I, I, Kilmer was the starring quarterback. Some kind of way first. Kilmer got hurt or and, got and sick. Now, yeah. And Sonny Field then, and some, and then, you know, you, if you let me fill in, you might yeah, not get right, the whole right, right. so Brady Brady, type Brady situation. Thing, yeah. Where it was. Half of Southeast D.C. is all about Sonny <laughs> and Northeast D.C. is all about yeah. Kilmer. So it was a thing with those. And I remember when I first got here, we used to have this couch just right there in the hallway. Mm -hmm. Sonny. Every day. And Sam Huff. Yeah. We sitting sit out there. there. Sit yeah. right there. And I used to go sit right between them. Really? And listen to some of these stories. Mm -hmm. they are, both those guys are tremendous <laughs> stories. A great storyteller. Fred, the old person magnet. You know? Uh, he, uh, he, well, Fred's he, got a little he, old person. He's blending in with all the old folks. Yeah, yeah. He can sit right next the, to them. The, the, I look, because I, I, I feel like old people, they, they, get, they get that knowledge up for free. Yeah. They don't, they don't mm -hmm. even, they just offered it up. Mm -hmm. And I just love people and I love to sit back and talk to them. But when you say Sonny, you got to say Billy Kilmer because that right there separate a fan base. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there's any conversation about Kilmer being better than Sonny? Because statistically, nah, no. I, I'm way. gonna say statistically, nah. no. Nah, and, I just, like, and I want to look at the again. I'm not a. I'm not. I, I'm a fan of Washington, but I'm yeah. not like a historic fan. I am. You know, and I think the. <laughs> 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 and, I, and I think just looking at statistics, looking at the film, looking at his impact on the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, Sonny's impact was bigger. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But yeah. I just was wondering if the fans but were like. Kilmer was first. Mm, like, yeah. since they go to the thing, like, yeah. you got to realize, we talking about when this team moved from Boston. Yeah. Like, this team used to be in Boston. Like, when this team moved from Boston, I think Kilmer was a part of the team then. Yeah. So it's like kind of like, that's their first person that they oh, identify yeah. with, you know? And then the other thing about Sonny is the broadcast stuff. Yeah. You know, like just in terms of legacy, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like he he was the voice of the command. Like kind of like John Madden was yeah. in the NFL. Yeah. Like there's something about that that just makes him kind like, of all time. Linger through yeah. generations. All it time. make him linger right. through generations. Makes him relevant. So, yeah, so I, is Joe Theismann too. Yeah, Joe yeah. Theismann. Joe Theismann. I, I was listening to one of my college games. And matter of fact, not even my college game. You know how they had that thing around the draft when they popped up and showed your 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 day when you got drafted? Yeah. Joe Thiamond was talking about me. I'm like, what the hell Joe doing? <laughs> Sitting up here breaking Just me down. Been, you know what I mean? Boston so football. That's, yeah. You know, it, it shows you that some of these guys, we basically was playing the game while they was basically covering us. And I remember Sonny. Just, I, I laughed listening to some of those conversations in the boot with yeah. Sonny and Larry. <laughs> and Sonny being there. Say like three words. <laughs> he said three words. And sometimes it, it'd be the funniest, you know, yeah. <laughs> Man, or words that came out the yeah. whole day, you know what I mean? So, nah, they definitely did great jobs of just covering this team, you know? Yeah, yeah, Mike and Larry being there like, yeah, Sonny, you know, they just took it to the 50-yard line. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they did. Sonny said, hold on, it's one of them, uh, I'm scoring, and Sonny said, I never seen anything like that. And Larry 
say, well, you didn't see the Dallas game? He said, yeah, he had two of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's sudden for you, baby. Give me an SJ9. You know them sick odds? Oh. Like, you can't, like... Anytime oh, I think of Sonny, it's so, kind of red, uh, uh, Arabic-ish, like for for like for the for the Celtics, yeah. where he he known yeah. for the cigar. Yeah. Yeah. Sonny yeah. is known for the cigar. And he'd have it in the in the lobby too. I like, wouldn't be yeah. smoking it, but it'd just be yeah, in his mouth. No, just yeah. chewing it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we got. Yeah. So Sonny's before my time, but my dad like remembers Sonny uh, Jurgens. He'd tell me all all the time, like, "Oh, we need a Sonny Jurgens in mm, that yeah. here again." Um, so. Forgive me if I'm not exactly right, fans, with this, but I believe it was in like 73 or 74. It was Kilmer and Sonny was kind of the debate yeah. moving forward. And that's where you got like the I like Sonny, Sonny or I love this Sonny. Way, uh, because in D.C., people would have I love Kilmer or I love Sonny. Sonny. Yeah. Mm. Really? Bumper stickers, no right? Because the fan base was no, it, it, it was separated. That's crazy. Right. I didn't realize that. And Kilmer was more of a conservative quarterback. Again, yeah. I didn't ever yeah. watch him play yeah. this before my and time. And Sonny cut it. Cut out Yeah, and Sonny was creative and yeah, this, like, was wild gunslinger. Time. He was the gunslinger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it's, it's funny. Watching his old highlights, yeah. Sonny's highlights, it... This is gonna sound crazy, but it, there's a there's like a Mahomes feel like no, he's doing. It, it, he is like you know they were talking about like he did like a behind the back pass yeah. for a touchdown and yeah. you know like the left handed throw. No rules. And, no and rules. Back pedaling away yeah. and again like kind of had that, uh, that that special something that it, mm -hmm. I'm sure at the time was probably frustrating for coaches, but now yeah. it's like that's what you're looking no, for. That, at the and it's so funny how you can have these in in house civil wars yeah. over like. Players, yeah. but it's only the quarterback position that this happens. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. we see this happen in the modern day with Kirk yeah. and RG3. Yeah. Like, yeah. so we've seen this story play out before, but it never happened with the wide receivers or the tight ends out of yeah. DBs. Yeah, so that's an interesting question. The, statistically, so I, I, you know, I would kind of put those guys in their own tier. You know, yeah. put Joe, yeah. Sonny, Sammy, you could put those in any order. I think we're probably feeling pretty yeah, that's good. That's the top tier, right? Yeah. The, those those top three. Tier. But the those. guy that I think is maybe the most interesting, two guys, and they're interesting for different reasons. One is Kirk Cousins. Yep. Because he's the fourth all-time leading passer mm. here at the organization. Yeah. And I know people don't really like him, but in terms of good quarterback play, yeah. What you mean don't like him? You don't think people like him? People like, they going off that Kirk Kane. They yeah. love Kirk. Do yeah. they? Kirk ain't did nothing to them. Kirk, but, I, like, he left, though. I think. <laughs> no, I, you no, no think. yeah, again, I don't know. Because when I, he was here. We are, we are big. Yeah. I, mean, I know Tan and I are we, huge yeah, Kirk supporters. Yeah, Kirk. I, don't think, I, don't I think they didn't feel Kirk won enough. We didn't. Uh, they, you got to think about it. Kirk put up numbers here, but we didn't win we, games. Yeah. yeah, we didn't have anything for him. Him to say, well, Kirk took us here. Right. Kirk, Kirk won. You know, won that on division playoff game. You know what I mean? So that's what was what, what, what had people in. You know, you know, bumping their gums the way they did when he was. You know, uh, I guess you can say was getting offered that money, yeah. and he was betting on himself because they was like, well. We don't really need him. We can get somebody else because he hasn't done anything, but he's he's putting up numbers. No, yeah, he's putting up numbers, but also his 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 business part of the the, the business was just so out there. Yeah, and yeah. he seemed so stoic. Yeah. Like he seemed like you know what? Either pay me, I'm gone. Not it, it was no, yeah. you know, was, I'm a part of y'all. We can yeah. we can work this a little, out. Little cold. You got to think. You got to think too, man. The the year that RG three had in 2012. Would never be erased out of those. They, it didn't matter what Kirk did. We was we was hoping that RG. This city was hoping that RG can get back. You know, we'll bump his head, bump sunny, his head, and be that guy again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so be the next sunny jersey even with that. RG removed from here, he was in Cleveland at the time. Kirk's the guy. They still wanted more. You know what yeah. I'm saying? They like, well, damn. Okay, I see him throwing for this much and that much, but where's the wins? You know what I mean? Yeah. When is he going to take over a game? So he had that stigma with him for so long here to now it seemed like it carried him, you know, followed him everywhere he goes because yep. that's the first thing they say. It's like, well, he got a lot of yards, yeah. but where's the wins? Where's yeah. the Super Bowl? That's a great point. Uh, the championship? And you um, can tell he was hearing that because yeah. that's how we got the famous phrase, you, you like, like that. that. Yeah. There you go. All right? Because get what? Y'all say I can't win, yeah. but I just won in week seven. Yeah. You like that? Yeah, and it was a it was a primetime game, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Time, yeah. So I, I think he's in an interesting tier with like Kirk Cousins, Mark Rippon, Doug Williams, like, Billy Kilmer. Yeah, like and again, like I don't know how you stack those guys because Doug, there's the historic element of Doug. Mm -hmm. He won a Super Bowl, first African American quarterback yep. to 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 play to start in a Super Bowl. Like, a sensation. I yeah. mean, it's it, yeah. and there's something that can't be overlooked about that impact. Can't, no. Cannot, you know, not ever. But Real in terms not. of numbers, it's yeah. not like he, he yeah. can't compare with the rest of them. Yeah. He, he has to be with the Jason Campbells of the world when it comes to numbers. Yeah, right. Yeah. But it's like there's something, and again, I, I'd probably put him up there. 
mm-hmm. because he did win a Super Bowl. But you went, you like the one I thing. I think the Super Bowl trumps all that. Everything. Really? I would say the Super Bowl trumps every. I, if I had two rushing yards and I would just start running back in the Super Bowl team, <laughs> yeah. I am one of the best <laughs> running backs <laughs> they ever the grace to take. Think about it. Yeah. People think more about. I also, Maybe a Terry Allen did yeah. they do uh, Stephen Davis. Yeah. Stephen Davis was better, yeah. had more yards, but we didn't I, win I'm going to give you a better example. Um, Lynn Swan get more credit than Stallworth, and Stallworth had $1,000 every better, year. Better, yeah. better player, I think. Stallworth yeah. was a better receiver all over, but yeah. Swan made the highlight but catches play, in, in the, the Super Bowl. Yeah, in the, in the playoffs. Yeah. So yeah. you say for years yeah. – I used to be sitting there like, man, Star Wars that guy. And then I looked at, I mean, I mean, Lynn Swan's that guy. I looked at Star Wars numbers. I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. How did this guy go to the That's Pro Bowl? I yeah. mean, go to the Hall of Fame before this guy yeah. when he has the oh, numbers. But so he had the moments. That's just how this world is wired. You yeah, know what I mean? Bro. We're going to salute the guy who did it in the prime time when everybody, when everything yeah. was on the line, yeah. than the guy who was consistently doing it. You know what I'm and saying? I 100% agree with you, but I hate that. I hate I that. hate it too. No, I'm, I'm with you. Like, that's the only way to separate pros. I can't stand it. With, like, it. with, like, like, with like basketball, when it's like, oh, you know, Michael's better than LeBron James because, because he champion. won six championships. Because he won, it's like don't. there's a million other reasons you could say why Jordan's better. Like yeah, that's uh, like irrelevant. You yeah, know, it's yeah. like there's like a team element there that if is. If that's the case, Bill Russell is the best player. Yeah, right. player. Yeah. He got Bill Russell, ring. Kareem, all yeah. them guys. Uh, I, so, so I don't love that, but again, I understand that. I understand what you're saying. I think that's 100 percent right. And I, again, it, it's a big deal for the for the organization, for the city, yeah. for Doug. So I don't know. Do you put him above Kirk? Yeah, he won Super Bowl. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, no, no, yeah, you they, yeah, I get you. I, like, I, I kind of feel that way. You can, you can go out here and <clears> – <throat> because you got to look at it also, you know, like I say, if you're not winning games with those yardage that you're putting up, yeah. what did you do? Well, think about this. You know what I'm saying? Yo, some of the receiving groups you've been a part of, yeah. you, Pierre, DJ, most people say, hey, this is one of the top wide receiving corps – that cause that uh, Washington never had, yeah. but they never put y'all before the posse no, because right. the posse went out there and won, won championships. Well, I mean, that's an interesting question though, because like Sammy Ball won two championships, and again, that was a million years ago. Yeah, but Sonny didn't win a championship. He didn't win a championship. Yeah. and Joe won a championship. Yeah. yeah. So do you? But re- Sonny was Sonny. Sonny. Yeah. Sonny. Yeah. Sonny was Sonny, but I still, you know, Joe is yeah. my number one pick. Yeah. yeah. Like Joe Theismann to me is the best quarterback See. to ever play. Here, I don't think you're wrong. And Sonny's championship is the yellow jacket. Right. I see what you're you know saying. What I'm saying. Yeah. I see so what you're saying. that's the championship. You yeah. you get you get to put on one of those. You're yeah. a champion. So, <laughs> you're a champion among champions. So I don't know, know that much about Mark Rippon. I'm gonna be totally I, honest. I know, yeah, so yeah. let's talk about him. Because like he does have a championship. Yeah. Do you put him above Kirk? Yes. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Because of the championship, because of the numbers. First of all, numbers are excellent. First of all, the only reason we're not talking about Mark Rippon right now, because we're talking about Son- Sonny and Sam. Yeah. But when we talk about the legacy, the history of this game, we talk about Doug, Theismann, and Ripken. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Of this team, this right. franchise. Yep, yep. That's the, when I first got here, I didn't hear nothing. I didn't know Sonny. I didn't know nothing about Sonny until I kind of got here and got right. settled. And I didn't know anything about Sammy Ball. Yeah. All I knew something about is Doug Williams, where it was Joe Theismann first. Yeah. yeah. Doug Williams and Mark Rippon. Mm. That's all I heard about because when it Joe came because Gibbs. those are the guys that Joe Gibbs it was the guy. three different quarterbacks yeah. that Joe Gibbs won championships with. Yep. And Ripken was always a guy that when I was coming up in the, you know, watching football, you always heard his name. Like yeah. Mark Ripken, Mark Ripken. Like yeah. I used to think he was a baseball player at first because yeah. this was a Mark Ripken Kyle. that played. Kyle Ripken, Kyle Ripken. there you go. Yep. So I knew it was a Ripken L- playing L- baseball. A lot, a lot of Ripken in there. Is there, is it, do you think you, this is something I always kind of go back to, like, with, like you know, you go to the, Go to the old high school game, and the old heads are out there. I mean, oh, this team's good, but they're not—they're nothing like uh, the seven, eight, the Lakers, right, or whatever. And a little bit, it's because like they grew up watching that. Yeah. Do you think you a prisoner at the moment? You give those guys more points, Theismann, Williams, Rippin, because those—that's who you guys grew up watching. No, won a championship. Won a championship. Yeah. Okay. That's what it is. I mean, look, this city will always be known for the three championships. Yeah. And if you was a part of that, and if you the quarterback or not. Those are the guys. Yeah, you're the you guy. see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Most de- come on, we would beat Mitch all the time. Yeah. We start trashing each other. All he do is put that. <laughs> that <damn. laughs> hey. Some, sometimes they don't know who beat Mitch is. Yeah. We walk and they be like, is that a Super Bowl ring on? Yeah. And they like, oh, that's B Mitch. Yeah. That's Brian yeah. Mitch. But because you so, never forget that time. You know what I'm saying? So it's just one of those things. And like, like, trust me, man, like I I don't envy nothing about, yeah. you know, no one and what their accomplishes is. But I would have loved to just play, not play, because that planning is 
overrated. Yeah. Win a championship. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, you know, I would have loved to win a championship. You know, I was talking, See that uh, feeling. I was talking about feeling. Talking to my father in law last night about and it's about this championship thing. And one of the things he said was like, you know, Andy Reid was considered, you know, a good coach, but not a great, great coach. Great coach because he won the championship. Yeah. Won the championship. And yeah. Kyle's kind of going through that same thing. Shanahan. Right now. He's a he's maybe the best coach in the NFL, but he's never but the, he's always going to be a tier below Till he wins the that hurts. ship. That, I know I, it, it hurt me. It hurt me for a cow because I'm a big yeah. cow fan. Yeah. I love are, everything yeah. about Cal Shanahan. Like the young kid and when I see him, every time he go in there, I'm like, should I not root for him? Because I feel like I'm rooting for him, <laughs> making yeah. him not win. You yeah. know. Yeah. But I, I, he gonna get one. He's one of them coaches that, that we gonna look back on and say, damn, it took him this long. It just long. took him along. Yeah, it took but, him this long. I, I, listen, to win a championship here. I would have loved this, especially if we would have won with Coach Gills being yeah. here for the second time. Yeah. He would have let me coordinate that Super Bowl parade. <laughs> I know the old Gills. I know the Joseph. Nobody let you do hey, that. I'm guy, a good coordinate. time coordinator. <laughs> Listen, we would have came down not in the that boat incident. <laughs> hey, you were not going. You were not in good standings the then. You was not in good standings hey, hey. with the league itself. <laughs> they didn't want you a part no. of nothing. <laughs> I was gonna come down independent. <laughs> Listen, it was gonna be one hey. one to remember. Hey. I tell you like this, they was gonna love Smoot for Smoot, but boy, you weren't gonna be able to be in charge of nothing after that book. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, Coach Gibbs, he always like, cause that was my dude. I was super close with yeah. him. Yeah, like even when it came he to seems the like, thing. Can we? I got a question for you because yeah. we had a really cool podcast with Doug Williams. If you hadn't heard that, make sure you yeah. check it out. But he seems like a just a really genuine person. No, he's a genuine, good heart. Was he like that with everybody? Yes, yeah. really. Well, just like any coach, you, you got some players you're a little bit closer to. Yeah. yeah. But he treated everybody the mm -hmm. same. Yeah. He was one of them coaches. You ain't got a knock to go into his uh, office. Just walk in there. Yeah. yeah. Like, we walk into the field. He finna talk to you. Like, yeah. coach was just more than a coach. He yeah. had the granddaddy effect. Yeah. Yeah. I think, too, man, when, when, when I learned about, you know, uh, him playing for him, as much as you, 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 you love him for being a, a kind hearted, um, you know, kind of a soft guy. He didn't tolerate that BS either. Yeah. Oh, he no. wanted nothing but he wanted nothing but hard. And I'm gonna say this the right oh, man. Oh, he, he, he wanted you to have a burr. Yeah. He, he wanted guys to play for him between them white lines. He wanted you to be a different dude. Yeah. yeah. And so you would look at him out because he always had these. You know, one thing I loved about his stories, he was sitting here. He would sit there and tell us a story about how great we are to be one of those one percent. Mm -hmm. You know, we one percenters. Like he, yeah. like man, I could never be you guys. Right. But I'm looking at him like Coach Gill. We could never be, be you. you. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you're the greatest of the greatest yeah. that can put all these guys in one room and lead us to that promised land. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and I saw it from watching and then got a chance to play, play for him. And yeah. I'm like, this is why this guy makes things special. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. yeah, he, he, he know how to lead yeah. men. It just shows you. Yeah, he knows how to lead It was men. really interesting on the uh, the Hales Tales podcast where they talk about, was it the 87 Super Bowl? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's coming out July 4th. Like, just listening to him talk, yeah. he's like, he's just very, you know, kind of, uh, not, not like a, doesn't have like this great voice, but the attention to detail. And they yeah. was talking about a practice they had leading up to the Super Bowl. He's like, them boys were physical. Yeah, and you could just he, you could no, no. hear. I could almost hear the the clacking of the pads as he was yeah. talking. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I was oh, like, no. "There's something about that guy. He can paint a picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. he can paint it. Yeah, hundred percent. So, okay, let me just. This is we're gonna finish up right here. Is so you said Joe Thais was number one to me, right? So yeah. where does so give me your list right now. Go for it. All right, I got Joe Thaisman at number one. Let's do top five. All right, all right, Joe Thaisman at number one. I got Sammy Bide number two. Mm -hmm. I got Sonny Jurgensen at three. I have Mark Rippin at four, and I got Doug Williams at five. That's uh, – what do you think, Tanner? I think you can't really you, – you can't – you can shuffle that round, yeah, but, but those kind of, guys are the guys that I was probably say, that's, that represent yeah. this history, this, this like, rich I, history. I feel – that's how I feel about it. I feel, I feel like you can tell the story of this organization through those five Because I, I, I would say the only person I probably would switch – is Sammy Ball at, at two and and uh, your man um, Sonny at and put Sonny at uh, two. three. I put Sonny at three and put Sammy at two. He said uh, he had, no, he had Sammy at two. I yeah. would have Joe at one, Sammy, Sammy at two, and Sonny at three. Yep. yep. You know what I'm saying? And then Red. And it's only because of championships, but if you really want to be technical, you can put Sammy in front of all three of those guys. You yep. see what no. I'm saying? So it's again, just one of those things. It's one of those man. things that was also like a different era. Like yeah. he again, like he's a cool guy to talk yeah. about because yeah. of everything he did in his era. Yeah. He had like a sixty percent completion percentage. Yeah. When, when they wouldn't throw the ball. When they didn't throw the ball. Like he was yeah. just such an outlier. But again, that's really cool. So let's talk about this real quick. 
best quarterback you played with while in D.C.? Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> woo! <laughs> I, would, I would say I would say um, Mark Brunel is mine. He's, okay, he's, my, he's, he's the guy. And you got to think this is coming from. Uh, so I played here ten years, and I had eleven quarterbacks, I believe. So yeah. out of ten years, I had fi- I had fifteen I had and 12. fourteen years Whoa. of total football. But mm-hmm. as a um, Washington. Whatever you want us to call us, yeah. as a Redskin, I play yeah. for the Redskins. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as a doing those ten years here, I had eleven quarterbacks, and Mark, I only had him for a year and a half. And as crazy as that might sound, he was my favorite. He he was wow. my favorite and and the best quarterback that I said when it came to. See, one of the things that. Well, I know why you liked him so much. That's one reason. <laughs> he, okay, well, that's one let's reason. Let's just talk about it. No, I had, a, I had a great year with yeah, him, my Pro Bowl year yeah, with Because we, we were researching. Yeah. Like he had, so he had 3,000 yards passing that year yeah. that we're talking mm-hmm. about. 23 touchdowns, 10 had 11 of them. Yeah. yeah. So talk about a guy who knew how to Get the ball up. to his man. Yeah. And, and that's, the, that's what I'm going to bring up. That's with not having any reps in training yeah. camp. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's with me not knowing nothing about him. That's with him just saying Tanner. I'm gonna get you to rock. Hey, hey, I might need you backside. That's need, how you can I talk to you, me. I need you to be Jimmy. Steel. I wouldn't be in the progression, <laughs> uh, Bingo. I won't yeah. be in the progression, and Mark finds me. Yeah. So that's just knowing football. Can and you, can you I, name all the guys you played with, by the way? A little bit. I think I, I think I might miss two guys, and one from New York, and there's one from here. Okay. So. Y'all gonna know their names. So starting with New York, I had um, Chad Pennington. Yeah. Okay. I had Vinny Testaverde, who's my favorite quarterback I played with in New York. Vinny yeah. Testaverde. Like it. I had uh, Quincy Carter. Yeah. yeah. I had <laughs> Mark, if I'm not mistaken, this is how you pronounce his name. Sanchez? Mark, Mark Bolger. Sanchez. No, no, Mark, Mark Bolger yeah. from Bolger. West Virginia. No, Mark Bolger or yeah. Mark, Mark Bolger or something like no, that. Bolger. It's not Bolger because Bolger no, played not, for the Rams. He's the younger right? guy. Not he's him. Guy. It's another guy. Mark, it might be Mark Bolger or Mark Bolger. Okay. I, I don't know how to pronounce that. Right. So, so yeah, don't even know who that guy is. That would have been four and four years with them. That's crazy. I get here. I got your boy, who you like, Ramsey. Ramsey was boy? first. Oh, Pat. Pat Ramsey. <laughs> I got Ramsey. That's five. I got Mark Brunel. That's okay. six. Uh-huh. I got your boy, uh, we just talked about. Todd uh, Collins? No, I, well, Todd is in there, but I'm going yeah. to talk about the first one, Jason Campbell. Campbell. Yeah. Then Todd Collins. Then Donovan McNabb. Yep, Fat Nab. Then, then, then my man from Florida. Uh, Rex Grossman. Rex Grossman. Sexy Rexy. Holy That's cow. That's 10. Yeah. The guy who I'm going to forget right now, he's with John them. John Beck. Beck. There you go. That's 11. Oh. So now at the Beck is RG3. RG3. Kirk Cousins. Yeah. Uh, you got from um, Texas who played here. Oh, Colt McCoy. Colt McCoy. And last but uh, that's that's it. thirteen. No, last that's, but not least, fourteen. See. I played with one more guy here. Well, you all survived. One more guy I here played here think, that uh, threw me a ball. That threw me that a ball, threw in, the ball? Game. in the game. One oh more guy. gosh, that's tough. Because I there was a period of time it was Rex Beck. It was it was a it, was, it wasn't uh it was the old boy that played for thirty three team Johnson. Who? Oh, was Josh it? Johnson? No, he wasn't no, here I, that I, year. I, no, I went here with Josh. Somebody threw me a ball here, huh? I would say because Colt got hurt in 15. No, Colt got hurt in 14. You did not play with Mark Sanchez. No, I no. did not play. No, he's with, that I'm was, with that, Mark that was the year after that Mark came. Yeah, I know. Mark played. He had a steel list. Yeah, was I was it Chase here, Keenum? No, I wasn't none of those guys. Okay. It might have it been um, it might have been the um, Texas last. He, he's, he's the last one. So oh, it was, it missing, was, it was Curry. somewhere. Yeah, so that's like 13, right? Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's 13, terrible because when I came here in 01, Jeff George. My first quarterback. Mm. He didn't make it through the year for we had Tony Banks. You don't remember Tony Banks? The dude from New Orleans? Tony Banks is a West black, Coast guy. Black quarterback, yeah. right? Yeah, black quarterback push you down the field. Then we come back and we the Jet Skins. <laughs> this when we had Shane Matthews, Danny Waffle. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, with Oh, them. yeah, it got bad. Yeah, so, it got, who, so, who was your, so, who was your favorite of, the, of all your quarterbacks here? I, you know what? I feel my heart went out to Pat Ramsey because mm-hmm. I felt like we set him up for failure. For failure. For failure. So my heart went out. I loved, personally, a quarterback nobody loved, Jeff George. Listen. Why? One of the strongest arms. Mm. That's what I've heard about so him. So accurate, yeah. accurate, but he is so arrogant. I, he's, he, the only person got in the way of Jeff George is Jeff George. Because yeah. all the God gallon, I mean, talent, he had the talent. All right? But I can't say he the best quarterback I played with here. Because guess what? Ain't but one quarterback ever took me to the playoffs here. One. 
Todd Collins. Todd. Todd. The chief. The chief. The chief waited 16 years. Yeah. To get his first start. <laughs> Don't you him. understand that? Good for him, man. And finally got the start at the end of this season. And the chief took us to the playoffs. All right? Todd Collins. I, I know they're setting the bar low. Todd Collins, what about you? I'm just trying to think through it because uh, I, obviously I was here. So this is what I'm going to say. I'm going to kind of like hedge with my answer. So the best year I had with a quarterback was obviously Robert in 12. Like he was – he was untouchable that year, man. Like he, the way he threw the ball, the way he ran, the way he elevated the whole offense. I mean, the play calling was huge that year. Um, the guy that was probably the most impactful for me in my career was probably Rex Grossman. Like he was just a great guy as a young player to be around. Yeah. Because he was super accessible, super good dude, good leader. Yeah. Been around with a bunch of teams. Yeah. Good communicator, understood football well. Yeah. And was able to kind of convey that to me, which was great. And then in terms of like the best guy, and I got Kirk when he was young, but the yeah. guy that I knew could be good, good. when he started playing yeah. was Kirk. Yeah. And to see him now, like it all makes, it, it makes sense. I'm not saying I called it, but like yeah. that, that's kind of how I feel about it. And so. Uh, At least you had a good group, man. Now that yeah. I think about the group of quarterbacks I had, I was destined to not succeed. I know, it was tough. And then obviously Donovan, having Donovan here was cool because he yeah. was like my favorite quarterback. He was my mom's favorite quarterback just to give some. Oh, his name was Brooke, Brooke Bollinger. Brooke Bollinger. Brooke Bollinger. Look that's what you. his name. I had to uh, find it, man. Brooke oh, Bollinger. Brick. So yeah, not that's, Mark. I've been saying Mark all this time. Yeah. It's Brooke Bollinger. All right. So Damn, that's kind of kind of. What's up, Brooke? Brooke was one of my guys. I like Brooke. Yeah. Yeah. But I had a lot of that's quarterbacks, That's such a group man. of quarterbacks, man. That's, yeah, that's and it's like, so crazy. None of the quarterbacks, of none of the quarterbacks I played with but one went to a Pro Bowl, and it was RG. Really? Chad Peterson didn't go to a Pro Bowl? Not in the years I played with them. Oh, all right, yeah. all right. In the, year, all right. in the years I played with them, none yeah. of them, only RG3 was a Pro Bowl quarterback. Who's think, the most? Who's Mark should have went the year I that I, I went. I played with a Pro Bowl quarterback. The only time I played with a Pro Bowl quarterback, I was with the Vikings. With yeah. Dante Cole, but mm -hmm. that's the only Pro Bowl quarterback I ever had in my life. The um, most underrated quarterback, in your opinion? Underrated. From my team? Yeah, from uh, here. Uh, Todd Collins. Todd Collins. Yeah. Most underrated, Jason Campbell. Don Collins. Now, Why is I'm that? Gonna, I'm gonna get to Jason because What'd you say? if Jason, huh? <laughs> what'd you say? No, I just, I just no, no, I just said oh. Todd again. No, I just this, feel man. like if Jason had this, I cut outside the lines mm -hmm. a little bit. It'd be better for him. He would have been a better quarterback. But tools, he had all the tools. Yeah. Height, yeah. arm strength, smart. Yeah. Like he had everything. I thought Jason, and I thought we didn't do Jason no gifts by giving him like twenty three offense coordinators. Yeah, and then yeah. and then he, he he didn't have an offense that that suited him. That catered I mean? him. Yeah, uh, the reason why I say Todd is because no one saw it coming. Yeah, mm. you want no one would have gave him a chance. Nobody. And he just sat here. He quiet. He 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 learned. He was the backup. And when Jason went down, he led us to the playoffs. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we we couldn't miss. Yeah. I mean, and it was crazy. He turned around my season because at that time, I was boy, I was upset with Jason. Jason was throwing the ball so hard and so high and so late. I was like, <laughs> damn, boy, this is this is not fun. You know, because you know when you feel like you're getting your back blown out. Yeah, yeah. And Jason was young, so it's yeah. no offense to Jason. Mm -hmm. We talked. We had these talks back then, and it was crazy. The next year, I had my first thousand yard season with Jason. But Todd came in and just man, I mean, the ball. I was. I Maybe remember that. Early. I remember that Cowboy game, last game of the season here. And that's the year we lost, um, you know, Sean. Uh, yeah. And I, I meant Todd was on one. The ball was like, it's just like, it couldn't miss. Yeah. And like, he just knew like, man, I'm going to make I know where I'm going before I He was throwing that thing to me and it was like, it was just, and I hate playing in the rain and it was beyond raining that day. Yeah. It was nasty outside. And it just seemed like every ball Todd threw was just like, ping. Perfect. Ping. I mean, he was just on Even the money, one, on the spot. He dropped in Minnesota when we had to win yeah, that game yeah, to go yeah, to the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. And he let, like Todd hiking the ball, 1.2 seconds, the ball out of his hand. Yeah. I ran out and up on I forgot who that guy was over there. It, went, and, it wasn't that to I, one Winfield. It and was and I went up on him. Yeah, yeah. And the ball, I turned, I literally put my foot, I was doing the out route. And Todd was throwing the throwing he the goal. He had already yeah. thrown the ball. By the time I turned around, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. a, you know, I got the speed for it. I was just boop, 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 boop. And the guy who covering, he's trying to, you know, Find catch it. up. Yeah. And by the time he caught up, I'm already going over his head. It just that's how Todd was. He just threw the ball perfect. That's cool. Perfect timing. I want to say a guy that's probably going to be a little controversial. It's going to be John Beck. And the reason I'm going to say John Beck is because I don't think people listen, 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 listen. <laughs> hey, come here, Tanner. Come here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> so I just want to, this is something people don't understand about the position. I'm just putting your leg. No, no, I, but I get you because I get you. And the reason I, I understand oh, was very productive. Beck, here. Man. But that guy prepped crazy. Like he prepped like to be a starter. 
and it just didn't work out. You know, I'm gonna say this, man, yeah. and I'm gonna be because you know I'm a, I'm a realist. I'm a realist. No, I'm but not, it's like, but not everyone's no, got. I'm gonna say this. No. Not everyone's got it. I don't knock that. Yeah, I don't knock that about Beck. The only thorn in my behind about Beck, and I'm yeah. I'm I'm not, you know, shame to say this, and I'm he probably would if he ever heard this, he'd probably say I'm right. Is he just boasted before we got a chance to do things? Mm. I thought the world of him. Yeah. Like how he called people, how he wanted to get guys to yeah. go work out, I how he his preparation. Yeah. Was, it was he awesome. wanted to do everything right, right. but you got to do it before you talk about right. it. And yes. I didn't like no one to boast to me because that's like, you know, Al Saunders. I love yeah. Al Saunders to this day. Yeah. Great, great, great soul. You know, he had a heart like no other guy. I think Al Saunders still stay in the area. When Al came in, he saw what I did my first year here with us writing plays in the dirt. He said, Tanner, I just came from the greatest show on the turf. You're going to have 2,000 yards. Don't tell me that, Al. Let's go out here and play football. And then get me, you know what I'm saying? And I didn't have them y'all. And he was saying sorry to me at the end of the year. Like, Tanner, I'm so sorry. No, man, just don't talk about what we're going to do. Right. Let's go out here and do it. So that was, that was the thing that bothered sure. me the most about Beck because – Beck was like, man, we're going to do this. Uh, uh, uh. And then we got out there like, Beck, where the hell? What you doing? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? John and Beck. Let me repeat that now. <laughs> he sounds like an accountant that works in Memphis. No, he's, like, he's a good John guy. John Beck. I'm a cornerback. Yeah. yeah. If you call me like, yeah, we got John Beck next week. I don't care no care no. Got no John Beck. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Hey, but tell me this, though. Tell me this, because this was the... <laughs> You know, I never want to go down in the middle of the season yeah. and have to come back and play. I remember when I broke my hand and I watched those four games, man. It was, it was like rough. the worst time of – like, I was almost happy to be hurt at that time. Like, yeah. I swear, I you, promise cause, you. Because I'm looking at Jabbar like, Gaffney and Jabbar come off the field. You know, he don't bite his tongue. No, he ain't holding nothing back. He ain't holding nothing back. And, bro, we went, to, we went to Canada to play Buffalo. Bro, that had that to be the worst game. game I've ever saw in football. Like, me watching football from any seat. From playing on and sitting on the bench or as a spectator. Yeah. But at that moment, I was a spectator because I had a broken hand. Bro, we couldn't get up. It's not like we couldn't move the chain. Yeah. Because no, you I had remember. your local councilman, John Beck, <laughs> throwing you the ball. And so the reason I wanted to bring him up also but, but yeah, but is because, up. dude, I mean, like, like you said, everything you're supposed to do. Yeah. He did. He did. He did. And yeah, it just didn't work out. And again, I think that shows you how hard it is. To honestly, make it in this league. Yeah. To make it out. Because, yeah. like, again, he was a guy, he'd stay. Well, I remember my rookie year, we'd stay after every Monday and we'd go through the entire game script. He'd make every throw. Yeah. And he'd go in and study all the film. Like, he just, and he you just, know what, he worked at you it. You know what I think, though, sometimes that happens? Who are you as a person? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, who? I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying nothing bad about him because I, I liked him as a person, like I That's said. That's a good dude, yeah. But I feel like if you kind of if you kind of do too much barking without, you know, without putting up the work, it happens that way. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't bark. You can't sit out it here. just didn't work out. Like my dad always said, I say this to this day. I, this is one of my favorite sins. A man going to show you who he is. I mean, no, a man going to show you who he ain't by telling you who he is. He is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so let's think about that. Yeah. yeah. You, you tell me you this, nine times out of ten, you ain't. Because you, 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 you had to you're tell, tell me. You're the, you're the you know what I'm saying? So that's why I've never been uh, opposed to wanting to, to, to hear nothing. Or, Tanner, you finna go out there? No, I'm just finna go. I'm gonna yeah. prepare myself. Let's say you are, though. I'm gonna prepare yeah. myself to go out and do the best. Yeah. Whatever may happen that day, because you don't know. You never know. Just be ready for it. You understand? Yeah. And so, you know, we talked about some of the best quarterbacks, some of the worst quarterbacks in Washington history. We yeah, got we our talk guy. about the worst. We, talk, we, oh, yeah. talk, we talked about some people that, you know, were. Potentially. That didn't, that didn't add up. It didn't add up. Didn't work out, even though we got a lot of respect for him. Uh, but then we got our guy, Jane Daniels, you know, yeah. and like, what are our first impressions of him? And, uh, yeah, let's start with first impressions. <sighs> well, I, I love the person because that's yeah. all we really know about right now. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love the person. Uh, the person seems to be grounded. Yeah. He seems to be a team player. And he seems to have his – the heartbeat of the team, if yeah. you know what I mean. And – Nothing seems hard to him. I watch him in practice. No throw yeah. seems hard to him. And right now it's all about learning curve. Mm -hmm. He seems to be picking up the offense yeah. pretty quick. So the intelligence is there. The athletic ability is there. Now, just like John Beck, can he put it all together? Yeah. That's yeah. going to be the question. Yeah, yeah. and I, that's one of the reasons I brought it up is because, like, there's something about, like, knowing the book and studying because mm -hmm. John knew it, right? I think Jaden knows it. For a young yeah. guy, it's pretty good. But I think the thing about Jaden that I've been impressed with is that his ability to go execute and mm -hmm. act on that, right? And yeah. kind of make plays, make the throws, work the progressions, let his footwork take him to the concept. And 
you know, he's, he's picked it up really quickly. The technical acumen seems to be there. So I don't know it, it's an exciting, it's, you know, they're still in helmets, yeah, you know, yeah. they're not it's doing still a pillow fight. But, uh, but I think in terms of, you know, answering or taking the test that's given to you, mm-hmm. I think he's just done a great job kind of checking off boxes. And again, yeah. like he's like, I think Tanner, you probably appreciate this the most. He's not a guy that's going to tell you like, oh, I'm this, I'm this, I'm this. It's no, like, I, no, I'm no. here to, I'm here to work. I'm here to get better. I'm yeah. here to try to be the best version of myself. I mean, I mean, one of the things that, you know, quarterbacks can be – it can be hit or miss when it comes to personality-wise. Yeah. You get some quarterbacks that's – They've been baby their whole life. They into they self, and so you have to deal with that because they like – well, like I said, into their self. It's yeah. about them. It's their show. So you're going to have to listen up, and, and then you get other quarterbacks that's like uh, Jaden Daniels, approachable. Yeah. That, that's willing to, to, to take – in whatever you're hearing, or they, they want to listen to what you see, or or how you want the ball thrown. Okay, I'm gonna give it to you. Let's this way. Like, I was amazed when Vinny used to be like Tanner. So what you see, Tanner? I'm like, oh, you asking me? Because mm-hmm. some quarterbacks, you know, I'm young. I don't. I, I never saw an older guy. Yeah. And he, this is my first time really having to, having this experience. Because let me just remind you, Chad is my age. Yeah. And he ain't asking me what I see. Yeah. Come, come on, get to that spot. You know, you you, yeah, you yeah. hear that sometimes. I'm like, well, okay, you want to be a little, you know what I mean? Like, I'm I'm getting there, yeah. or I'm gonna get there because I know, right. you know, it, it don't take me long. But when I look at Jaden, he seems that guy. And every time I listen to one of the guys that he played with, yeah. that's what I'm hearing, man. He's a team. He's a guy. He's a fun yeah. guy to be around, even yeah. through the draft process. <laughs> right. All these guys, who worked out, was everybody yeah. was yeah. like, it was like he was one of those guys. They gra- everybody gravitated to him. You know what I mean? Because yeah. the way his spirit is, and and you, that's rare for quarterbacks. Because people's kind of like, oh, that go the, that go the dude over there, and uh, then when they got the to play quarterback in the rest of us, bingo. And so I, I think that's right there. That's a good way to. Start off yeah. knowing that he's a guy that's very approachable, that's gonna be, that's gonna listen, and he's a fun-loving guy. So he want everybody to have fun, and the only way you are gonna have everybody have fun is make sure those guys get off. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And again, I think back to those that thing he said in our interview where he's like, "I got up at five a.m., got guys to come work out with me at five a.m." Like, takes a special kind of dude to do yeah. that. And so, obviously, the guys here have talked about how much they like him and they're excited about him. I think he's done a great job checking all the boxes yeah so really every time we get to watch practice that's the person i'm most excited to watch because no he's the most important position that's why we dedicate a whole show to talking about these guys there's a reason that theisman is this iconic thing or yeah. sunny is this iconic thing is because yeah. they play the most important position in the yep. sport mm-hmm. but that's going to do it for today's show please make sure you like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts if you want to see our ugly faces check us out on youtube and we got faces on our chest that's it that's a wrap